Uh, hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, I kind of set your camera in a new spot here because I wanted to kind of show you my TV and computer setup here in my shop. And there's a couple of things. I've been upgrading all sorts of things around here. And we're going to talk about some of that. Oh, what a pain it is to do upgrades. <clears throat> First off, let me say that unfortunately, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, <clears throat> but I am the tech guru around this establishment. You know who is not. First off, you have to pull her up, screaming and kicking all the way to a new technology. Like when I upgraded from one version of Windows to another with a new computer. <sighs> She's tough. Anyway, so I have to do it all. I've upgraded so many things around here in the last 30 days. It drive me crazy almost. For example, my TV. I had Roku on that for doing channel selections of all the different stations that you can get. That's my TV here in the shop that's up on a, a railway hanging from the roof, from the ceiling. And I can move it back and forth from the shop, from the front to the back of it. Anyway, that's where it's sitting right now. And so when I'm here, it's in an ideal location. <clears throat> uh, all three of my TVs that I have, I've had to put a new Roku on them. And if you know anything about the Roku, it's not a bad system. I bought the ones I have about 14, 12 years ago. So I've got my money's worth out of them, quite frankly. And the new ones, I bought the panel, the boxes before because the stick, the Roku stick was getting bad reviews at the time. But this time, the sticks are getting pretty good reviews. So I went with the Roku sticks on all three. So they're all three in alignment with each other. They all had the same identical remote. I did buy one extra remote for just in case. And I did put the Roku applicant applications on my phone. So I have Roku been able to access any of my boxes from my cell phone or from its own individual remote. And I have a spare remote just in case. I figured this system's gonna go, I hope, another 10 or 12 years. So what I have should get me by without having to buy anything. And I should be able to fix it on the fly if something goes wrong somewhere. Um, so, but what a pain it was to, because to upgrade everything, first off, you gotta go out to Roku and add all these different uh, devices to your account. And I hadn't been out there for 12 years, obviously, doing anything. So, I had to go out there and get them all added, give them the proper name so I can identify them on my network system as I'm looking for them. And it, it's been a real challenge. And to boot every single machine, I had to go back in and put the passwords in for all of the different channels that I use that use passwords to get into them. Ay, ay, ay. So it was kind of a pain upgrading everything to the Roku system. But that's not all I did. I also cut my cable TV bill. I've been using a cable box from my local cable channel, the hardwire in the ground, which is Spectrum around here. And I eliminated my cable completely, cut it off. My bill, I still have their internet. Uh, my bill went from my $240 to $80. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I should have done this a long time ago. I've been wanting to do it. But now without any cable, what do you do? So I, I went ahead and subscribed to Sling. That's running me right at $50 a month for the package deal that I have. And it's, it's been fine. Everything I'm looking for is really on there, with the exception of local channels. And I found a couple of channels, off channels that you can subscribe to that have one or two of these local channels from either Milwaukee or Chicago, the two closest cities for me, so I can get the local channel still. But now that I've hunt and packed, I've got them, most of them pretty well lined up, all the four major ones, stations, uh, at this point. So I can see local as well as um, the cable stuff without any problem. I like Sling better than the cable, quite frankly, the cable box was not that great. I always kept messing up. I had to reboot it all the time. And the picture on this 
going through the Roku is so much better picture. It's like watching 4K versus watching something in 720p uh, TV resolution. So it is much better, and I'm really happy I did the upgrade. But uh, what a pain it's been, and I'm still not done. I'm still running across channels where all of a sudden on one of the TVs, I got to go find what the password is so I can get logged in on it for the first time. So logging in all these passwords on all of these different TVs is really a pain. I wish they did that a little bit better so you could retain the passwords when you upgrade like that. But that's another story. Anyway, I've, I've got that pretty much going now, the Roku, and I'm very happy with the way it's set up. And it between the Roku, uh, the sling, and the this getting rid of the cable, uh, my bill is still quite a bit less than it was. Now, I will also one of the other things I was talking about I was going to do is I wanted to start researching the the internets out there. So that's another upgrade I did. As you know, I mentioned I did buy, I got Starlink about a month and a half, two months ago, and I installed it up on my on my roof, and uh, that has been working fine. I haven't had any problem with it at all. So now I've got my Spectrum. Oh, speaking of Spectrum, when I went in and turned in the cable box. They saw that I had an old modem, cable modem, so they also let me upgrade my modem for free. And this modem seems to be running a lot better than the old modem did for keeping up with speeds and everything. So actually, I got an improvement on my Spectrum internet connectivity now. It seems like it's doing much better than it was. I was going to get rid of that too. I was really looking at Starling to eliminate Spectrum. Now I'm not so sure, but I'm going to give it a year. I'm going to have run both of them and switch between them. I have everything on one for a while and then I'll put everything on the other and that sort of thing. I want to get a feel for them. But there are actually three different internet connections you can, that are out there available, readily available to uh, most people here in the United States. The third one is the cellular connection, 5G. And 5G now is available in this area too. So yes, I did. I upgraded my cell phones. Uh, another upgrade I just did. I went from my Galaxy S8 to a Galaxy A15. And while I was at it, I upgraded her system too. We went into T-Mobile. We signed up for their senior citizen, their S55 series. I think it's called the Essential 55 on T-Mobile. It's 45 bucks a month. All data and phone text unlimited on here. 50 gigabytes of before they drop it to 3G. And that's probably more than enough. I don't really do much data stuff on here as a general rule. If power goes out, I lost my cable uh, from Spectrum. Then I was using my phone to connect the computer to here. And then I, during that time, I might have been using the... Uh, faster speed but as a general rule I'm not going to be using those unless we have a major power outage of some kind and I lose my spectrum because when power goes down so does my internet connection with spectrum every time that's just no way around that and so that means that when I lose my cable when I lose power even though I can bring the power back up on the house if I don't have some other means of internet connectivity I can't get to the outside world to see what's going on or to get by until the power finally comes back on. And I, that's one of the things I wanted to address is to be able to have internet connectivity even with the power outages. So that's why I'm reviewing all three of these internet connections. Uh, when I upgraded my phone to the 5G phone, uh, I got us both the same phone. And I had to, of course, move all the data over and do all sorts of things. <sighs> upgrading the phone is probably, it's even worse than upgrading Roku. So, but I got them done. They are working. Everything is going along. We have 5G capability on both phones and they're identical. Now, as I said, her technology skills are pretty far down. And she kicks and screams to move up. So, obviously, with the new phone... I have been getting barraged with questions from her 
and about why is it doing this? Why can't I do that? And, and of course, you got to configure all those things in because in an old phone, they were there. And now in the new phone, it doesn't come up like the old phone. Even with all the copying everything over, you still got to manipulate this phone to give me what you want it to be. And she's been barraging me with questions. So thank goodness I had the same phone because I have become familiar with this pretty quick about how to maneuver through the settings and all that. What setting you're looking for depending upon what it's doing or not doing. So I've been able to help her pretty readily. And she's been slowly getting that up to speed. We've had these for a couple of three weeks now. And she's finally slowing down on asking me questions. They're not every day anymore. But upgrading your phone was the second thing I had to do. <sighs> but while I was at T-Mobile and I upgraded the phones, and by upgrading that account to the 55 account, uh, that dropped my phone bill uh, almost, uh, almost $30. I couldn't believe it. So I also did something else. I added another SIM card uh, phone line to my cell service. So I have two of them. But the second one is for data only. And it, that SIM card I took and I put it. I bought a the Nightgear Nighthawk M6 Pro. I found this one at a really good price. It was a refurbished. And it works fine. And I put the SIM card in here. So I'm running the SIM card on this. And that's so I can start experimenting with with cellular signal. And since this is also a portable router uh, with a built-in SIM card, I can actually unplug it and carry it with me anywhere because it has a battery inside it too. Um, there's a lot of features about this. I'm still learning about how to use it. So I'm decided to use this internet connection out here, I'll use the other internet connections for the uh, Spectrum and the Starlink uh, Wi-Fi's. I can I'll use those on most of the stuff in the house. Now I can go to any computer, any computer or any TV or anything. If I want to switch where I'm making my connection, I can I can make that change in under 10 seconds as a general rule. It's no big deal. But I try to keep these on their own networks to try to see how those networks are working. So I get a chance to use this cellular 5G now in this environment here, and we'll see if I can keep up with it. This will tell me a lot about what I can and can't do when the power goes out. And of course, the cellular signal traffic goes up dramatically which slows down what you can do with the cellular signal during power outages. And I can tell you that I know for sure. Is that going to happen with Starlink? I don't know. We'll have to see. So I don't know which one of these three is going to be best for when power goes down. I know which one is the worst. That would be Spectrum. Because with that, you ain't got nothing. So maybe the cellular signal might be a good alternative. In which case, between my SIM card there... And my two phones, I can tether these into being hotspots also if I want to. So I can tether individual computers or whatever to one device or the other and have three different uh, 5G connections to the cellular system to run a small amounts of equipment, devices. And theoretically, that way, maybe I can get by during the outage at least and be able to still get information from outside of these four walls. So uh, I'm working on all three of them now, but believe it or not, for what it cost me with what I saved between my T-Mobile bill, upgrading the account to what it is now with two phone lines and still 15 bucks a month less than what I was paying before. And my Spectrum bill where I did away with cable completely and went with Sling, uh, I have managed to almost break even on my monthly cost between having all three cellular lines running and using Sling as my cable connection versus the way it was. Almost the same price. So now I have three internet connections. So it's not going to cost me really that much difference in monthly for the next year than it has been if I made no changes. But upgrading... I think I waited too long really to start upgrading this stuff. 
Um, anyway, that's kind of where that's at. It's been very busy trying to get all of this straightened out, doing things with the phone. I do more with the phone than I ever did. I've always liked, preferred using my computer to using the phone, mainly because I prefer Windows environments to Android environments. But I do have both, and I find myself more and more, I'm going to be dependent upon the Android system um, for things that are going on. I did buy Blink security cameras, which I'm going to now, hopefully that'll be my next project, is to get some of those up and running and see how that system fits in to watching things and doing things around the house and see what's going on. I've also found out that I think I can connect those Blink uh, cameras right straight to my TVs, to my Roku. And if I can, that's uh, that would be really exciting to be able to actually go to any TV and pop it up on the Roku and look at the cameras around. So I'm hoping that that, that would make it really exciting if I can do that. Um, I don't know if I can do it with the Blink system or not. I know I can do it with other IP cameras, but we'll see. They say that you can even do it with the Blink, but we'll see. I'll, I'll have to wait and see how that works out. But at this point, um, it's something else I'm going to ex experiment with, and I'm upgrading for around here is to have a good camera security or some kind of camera security system so that I can kind of look at things at any time of day or evening out and about and see what's going on. Also, uh, I can use that Blink uh, system to any of my tablets. I have this tablet here and again, my phones all on Android. I can go to the Blink system to any of these. So I may get one more tablet and keep it in the bedroom so that in the middle of the night, if I want to check the cameras, I can do that from the bed also. But that remains to be seen. But tablets are becoming more and more a part of what I'm doing as opposed to just using my uh, Windows computers in the house. So, speaking of the computers, that was another thing I have upgraded. Um, because I'm using this more and more, and if you remember, when I first started doing videos, I was using my Microsoft Surface computer. The first one ever come out. And that was my camera as well. I used it, picked up the camera, the, the tablet and moved it around and used that as my camera to take videos, do videos. So anyway, then when it went bad, I bought the Surface Pro, uh, the next evolution. And that one was really nice because that was a true Windows machine. And it, I've used that one for eight years, nine years. And it's been a great unit. And it finally took a dump about a year ago. So... And if you remember, I bought a tablet because the new Surface uh, Pro, which was like 15 or 17 by then, uh, is like $1,400. And I just said, no. So I bought the laptop. And I bought this HP, if you remember, laptop for about $500, $550. And I was using this for a while here and had it sitting right here. And it was okay, but... It's not my tablet. I really missed, and I have up to now, my Surface Pro uh, tablet. So, accidentally, a couple, three weeks ago, I ran across on Amazon where they were selling a Microsoft Surface Pro 3 for $145. And I went, what? And I looked at it. It's identical to my Surface Pro, almost completely. There's very few changes that were done to this. But it's the next... It was obviously two levels up from mine. And for $145, I snarked it up. And then I looked around on Amazon. I found that they were selling one other Surface Pro 3 for about the same price. And then there were other Surface Pros out there, other versions. 5 and 7 and 9. And the price is going up as you go until you get to that whatever number they're at. Now, I can't remember on the Surface Pro. But the new ones are still about fifteen or $1,600. Um, the, obviously, the older ones are not quite as new. And I think Pro 7 is when they went to Windows 11. This one is still on Windows 10. But this one is virtually identical to the one I was had. And I've been loving it. It's like going back to the old way, and I really do prefer it. 
Now, I did make one change when I did this, and that is that I took and I bought this here. It's a stand that can pivot and lift up and down. It's a little stand that you can buy that this sets on. This way the heat can get out from around it better. Because the one I had had a full back on it and had a plate underneath here, uh, a U-channel that this set into. So I think the heat didn't get out of that Surface Pro. And that's why eventually it started coming apart in the corner. And just it started having overheating problems. So hopefully that won't happen to this one. But I'm tickled to death. For $145, I got a Surface Pro again that's all set up. And instead of using that four-way, uh, that one to four uh, extension, USB extension, I bought one of these, which is actually seven, and they're individually switched. So, and I have it plugged in to my USB port because you only get the one USB port on these. This gives me up to seven USB ports now instead. So that's a big improvement over what I had. This is a much more comfortable situation. And it does set up there. I'm not worried about it ever coming off of there. It just isn't going to. So if I'm worried, I may put a rubber strap on it of some kind. But I don't think I really need to. And it's been working quite well. One more thing, I'm going to let you go because we're still aren't done talking about this. I have a ton of, to talk about about this guy right here. This cellular uh wi-fi very interesting it's been a big learning curve but when i was out there looking around the other thing i found that i didn't know was even existed was this keyboard and mouse they're two separate units this is the uh, logitech mouse triology i think they call it or something like that and this is the k480 i think board what makes these two unique is you can Bluetooth connect to up to three separate devices with this. They have a little, this one has a little switch right here that you switch from one to two to three. And the mouse has a button over here that has the light lit up. Whoops. Has the light lit up. And you touch the button over and over again and it rotates between all three of them. And I programmed the first one to my computer I programmed the second one. Check it out. So I bring up the button, go to two, and now I'm connected to two, and you can see it popped up. And you can see my mouse. Keyboard, the same thing. And what I really love about this, one thing I hate about the phone is trying to use your fingers or your thumbs doing things on it. But now, I can actually go from two to three, go to three here, and now you can see my I have my mouse is now running on there, my cursor. And if I want to open it up, boom, I'm opened up. I can mouse click on anything. I can keyboard type in and use this using my keyboard and mouse. Makes using that phone so much easier when I have to. Like if I'm doing messages or things like that, this thing is wonderful. Or to go through the settings real quick, using that mouse to finger through these is so much quicker than trying to do it with your finger but if you get a chance to go with the three-way mouse and keyboard for bluetooth hookups this is a good buy i think they both were each were under 30 dollars one was like 29 the other one was 25 but for the money i really like this setup and the keyboard here this is the smaller keyboard it has the slot um, so you can put your device in here into the slot, but, uh, you can get the bigger keyboard with the mouse, with the wide, uh, enhanced board with the number pad and everything instead. And it still has the three way connectivity. Uh, it's a little bit more money, but it, that, if that keyboard fits you better, that's not a bad one to have, but this has been a wonderful setup and I can now so quickly and easily switch between all three devices without any problem so anyway upgrades 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 God. and there's still some stories here i gotta tell you about as i go along so i'm gonna unload some of the pain in the butt stuff i've had to go through for this but i gotta tell you upgrading your technology is really 
it can be very time consuming. So plus the learning curve to learn all the new stuff, because as these things come up and they do more and more, a lot of times they do things differently too. So you have to learn how they're done now. Um, so there is no format between all these different devices that all to be able to help you to just know where to go from one to the other. So you have to learn how they really work. Thank goodness for YouTube. I've used YouTube to be able to do all this stuff. I probably wouldn't even be halfway done with this stuff if I had to do it by figuring it out the hard way. So, uh, thank goodness for the internet. Thank goodness for YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me. But at this point, I'm glad I got it all done. Or at least starting. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess that's a sign I need to get off. When I start talking a whole lot, I start coughing lately. Um, so, anyway, I, that's it on upgrades. That's where I'm at. If you want to find out details, <laughs> and I'll be talking about this stuff as I go along more and more as I learn. So, but <clears throat> stay tuned. We'll see how we really do on all these different internet, these internet connections and see how they really work for me. And maybe that'll help you figure out how you can find alternative ways for you. <clears throat> maybe to save money or maybe to get better, more reliable access. Whatever the reason, you'll be able to do it yourself. Uh, make the changes and make maybe upgrade to a better system. Love to hear how the, your war stories about that stuff. Or if you have done it, I have to tell you, I waited too long to start upgrading stuff. That's why I had to do everything the way I did. So much at one time. So, anyway, that's where I'm at. I appreciate you letting me unload where, or what I've got done. <clears throat> and i got a long way to go. But, I'm very happy with the way things are. And believe it or not, everything works. Which is the hard part, is getting everything so at least it still works. And keeping it there. So, uh, thanks for coming by. If you learned something here, you like this video, hit that like button. It let's me know I'm doing something right. Mm. Most importantly, though, please come back again because I know we're near done. And you might want to make sure you bring your coffee with you next time, too. Thanks. And we'll see you guys again very soon.